I'm going to just kind of start with, okay, you see this rock right here? I'm going to start with that rock. Now, the thing that is important here is what are the basic geometric shapes that we need to be concerned about when we come up to try to draw something? The basic geometric shapes are circles, squares, ovals, rectangles, triangles, and diamonds. Now, if we start with a preconceived idea of making this drawing as simple as possible, the best way we can do that is look for the basic shapes. You see this guy right here? He's kind of a rectangle. But it's a rectangle that kind of has a hump in it. A little bit of a hump. Boom. It comes down on something here, kind of a, a plate that's about like this. Now there's another guy that comes out here. Look at this corner right here of this rectangle. The bottom of this rectangle here comes a little bit higher than this one. And it comes up, and then look at this. Kind of an oval, squared off, then it comes up the hill a little bit. Okay? What's over here? By golly, if I had to say anything, it looks like a triangle. Almost looks more like a diamond. Something like this. Then we got some water coming down over here. We got some water coming down over here that's got some visual interest to it. Now, here's the water. Okay, there's a gap here where there's some really dark stuff. Comes up, and there's the corner of a rectangle there. So, if we start with the basic shapes. Now, the water comes down. We see this guy. This guy comes over to about here. Then there's another guy that comes over angles over. If we start with the basic shapes or modified basic shapes, that is a tremendous help to us. Now, starting with this guy right here, this guy, there's a bunch of stuff that we can add to this, but this is, for the most part, what this guy looks like, generally speaking. So, he comes down to a point here and then kind of curves and goes back this way. This is all in shadow. Like that. There's this, and then there's another shadow. Look at this shadow that's even darker down here. I'm just going to put that in like that for right now. There's a crevice right here. And this portion of this is more so in shadow than this one. And then there's some really dark stuff underneath here. More stuff here. This, this guy is up to a corner here, kind of comes down, a little whoop de doo there, and then this is all in shadow. I can put this like this. All right, now, I, I'm not going to carry this too far. There's kind of a light area here, and then this is in shadow. So there's my number two. Where's the, the water coming in? The water's coming in from about here. And there's some kind of rocks back here. And then there's a few designs back here of rocks back in that distance. But we're mainly interested in trying to do the rocks. Okay, we got, right now we just have light areas and brown areas. Okay, we started with the number two. Now let's go with the number three. Where do we see some really good dark darks? I see a dark dark that comes down like this. We can go with cross hatching this dark comes all the way across here I would recommend you try to avoid in a place like this you see this is kind of a shape don't do your scribbling this way or your shadowing this way go perpendicular to the shape it comes down there's a break in that rock boom now this rock comes kind of out of here rocks around, kind of curves up, over, and then what do we have here? We've got somewhat, we have somewhat of a design here that looks like a triangle. There's a triangle. 
Then it's picked up again up here. So I'm going to change the direction of it a little bit. Got a whoop de doo here. Comes around. There's another triangle right in here. This comes down. Now this is all in shadow. But some of that shadow is darker than the other. And it comes around here. There's some darker shadow here. Do we see any cracks or crevices? Well, what I do see is that there's a space underneath this rock where there's something that's really dark underneath here. So I'm going to really put this in dark. Really dark. And then there's a little whoop de doo kind of a hump on this rock in front. Boom, there's another little whoop de doo Comes up, over, down, and back. Some stuff going on in here. And then crack, fissure, crevice, whatever you want, down. This is going to be light. This is going to be dark. A little bit darker, but not quite as dark. What's going on here? Well, I see this somewhat triangular shape in here. This is in, it's a little bit in shadow, but this one is more in shadow. And you're going to have the opportunity of a light against a dark on that waterfall there. There's some changes in direction here. This is in shadow. Then there's even darker shadow here. All right, what about this rock? Okay, we got a nice light area here coming down, comes back. There's some whoop de doos in here. Boom. And this is go perpendicular, go another direction rather than the direction of the. Cross hatching here. Get that in there. Now, where's the darkest dark in this shadow? The darkest dark in this shadow is right along this edge here. Now, what's happening? I'm not trying to say that I know how to do rocks perfectly, but what I am looking at are the variations of light and dark. What's happening in the process of doing this drawing, I'm actually starting to see what I'm looking at. One of the greatest obstacles in learning how to become a good painter is we have to be able to see what we're looking at. So now, just, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to put this rock in. This has a, a lighter area right there, and then it goes into some darker areas. Then it's got this really black black right here. Now, it's got some stuff going on back here that's moderately dark, and the water is coming along in there, and the water finds its way to where it comes over the waterfall. Now, what's the deal with the waterfall? It's got a little bit of here, got a little something going there, kind of coming this way a little bit. There's a little bit of a darkness here. Then there's another tier here, and then we have somewhat of a Nice light area. So what do we have? We've got the twos and we got the threes. Watch what happens when we put our number ones in here. The, the number one follows kind of this contour right here, but it doesn't go all the way up. Then you pick it up a little bit here, and there's a little bit there. What about here? Well, there's kind of a form of one, of a number one that comes up this way. Where do we see it down here? We see a nice sharp number one in here. How does it get there? I don't know, but I just, I'm trying to record what I'm seeing. And what happens is when you're drawing like this, you start to see what you've been looking at for the first time. You start to see. Now, what about this water? Well, the water's kind of light back in here, and it has this little winding, little stairway kind of thing coming down here. 
hits, push, comes along there, down the steps. And then you've got this thing. There's your water there. And then you've got these light rocks. You know? So what I want you to do is I'd like you to just draw this in the hopes of being able to start to see some of what you've been looking at. Okay? And you can use, you can use this picture. You can use the picture we're working on. You know, whatever. But I'm, I'm being deathly serious here. The biggest obstacle we have to overcome in becoming a good painter is the obstacle of being able to see what we're looking at. We can look at something for years and not see it because we have pre preconceived ideas of what we think it should look like and what we think it should look like kind of trumps what we're actually looking at. So what we want to do, the whole purpose of drawing is to develop our ability to see what we're looking at. And if you can see it, you can paint it. If you are looking at it but don't see it, you won't be able to paint it. So a little homework of drawing. Take these pictures home with you. Don't leave them there when you come back tomorrow. But take the, at least do one little drawing where you look and try to reproduce as best as you can and look for the basic geometric shapes of circles, squares, ovals, rectangles, and triangles. That will help you reduce that cluster of rocks to something that you can manage.